salvation. In the days of exile, they were mourning their loneliness. They were banished to the wilderness, where they had to wait, to wait for what felt like forever. The days have grown darker. The season has become colder. This pandemic of COVID-19 has kept us all in a wilderness of isolation, a lonely exile, as we all wait for salvation. Today, I will not diminish the difficulties of this season. We have not been able to gather in pews, gather in this place, our sanctuary has sat empty for far too long. We have been exiled to our own homes for worship. Maybe you are like me and have felt as though the light we once carried, the faith we once clung to has now diminished. Diminishing in the darkness with depression depression that can come in the wilderness of our days. This unknown future fills our hearts with anxiety, restricting our faith from experiencing peace. All those what-ifs continue to plague our minds. The pieces of our hopes and dreams are left shattered, and our peace is now scattered among all the fear and worry of what might lead to tomorrow. But let us not forget. Let us not forget that the people of, of God have been through seasons like this before. The wilderness is an exile of sorts that can actually renew our faith, bring us peace in ways we might not have imagined before. Yes, the wilderness can be dark, cold, and lonely, but it can also be a place where we come together, where the light of the night sky can shine stars in the brightest of nights, a space where we can prepare our hearts for a new day to come. What if we could create a space a sanctuary of sorts in our own souls in the midst of this wilderness season. Like collective lights on a Christmas tree, we too can experience collective peace, a peace that gathers all our spirits together. The Spirit of God unites us together across time and across space. And this collective peace will lead us from lament to rejoicing. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to thee. Songs of lament have been sung by people across time and space. This song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, reflects the pain of the Hebrew people who found themselves in exile. But like all songs of lament, there is always this turn, this turn towards praise. The suffering of souls often sing these songs when they find themselves stuck in wilderness, feeling depressed, feeling anxious, feeling all alone. 
And yet they are a reminder that we are not alone. Our spirits are united together by the Spirit of God, who once hovered over the waters in the beginning, who also came down from heaven like a dove when Jesus was baptized by John. The Spirit of God gives us a collective peace that comforts our souls in difficult times. This collective peace is similar to what Emile Durkheim calls collective effervescence. Collective effervescence is a profound phrase used in the book, The Elementary Forms of the Religious Life. This French sociologist describes collective effervescence as the type of magic that he witnessed during religious ceremonies. Collective effervescence is an experience of connection, this communal emotion, a sensation of sacredness that happens when we find ourselves a part of something bigger than ourselves. In these grand communal moments, our focus mysteriously shifts from me to we. I know at some point in our lives, we have all experienced this collective effervescence. Maybe you found yourself at a wedding or a funeral or perhaps even a football game. Maybe you even experienced this on traditional Christmas Eve services when everyone lights a candle and perhaps the lights go down into a darkness and all you see is the candles of individuals holding light together like stars in the night sky. Hmm. It is scientifically proven that there are psychological benefits to the effects of collective assemblies. And even this, there is more to than these experience just simply distracting us from everyday reality. The collective effervescent places of our lives are these large human moments where we experience together joy and sorrow. This social connection of meaning that may embrace both pain and peace. I would even make the argument that church worship is not only good for your soul, but also good for your mental health. Hmm. But what happens when we experience a season where collective effervescence cannot exist? Hmm. Can we still experience can we still experience collective effervescence? I'm not sure, but I do believe that no matter what season we find ourselves, we can experience collective peace. Collective peace is what I believe folks were searching for on the day where John the Baptist was dunking people in the Jordan River. It's strange how the Gospel of Mark begins. Mark is rather abrupt. There's no birth narrative of Jesus, just a bunch of people gathering together for baptism. But we Baptists, we particularly love this story because for us, John was a good old Baptist. He preached fire and brimstone, baptizing more bodies than Billy Graham. And his diet was way hardcore. I mean, it was nothing like Whole30 or that hipsto, hipster keto diet and his clothes would put Mother Teresa to shame. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of snake handling going on in that wilderness as well. But John the Baptist is not doomsday prepping the people of God, but rather preparing their hearts to receive the peace of God. Hmm. John is preparing the way for a new way, a way that would speak truth to all people. And John will soon meet the one, the way, the truth, and the life in his work when Jesus meets him down the river 
to be baptized by he who finds himself unworthy. It is in the waters of baptism that we are reminded of God's true peace. And peace, like faith, is ultimately an act of letting go. Hmm. And this is not just some frozen, cold-hearted Disney song. No, letting go is rather difficult. I mean, have you ever experienced baptism, like good old Baptist baptism, like where you were submerged all the way up and then brought back in front of a whole body of Christ? If not, maybe you were Catholic or Methodist. Perhaps you simply have been in a large body of water. There's something about water, those tiny molecules of H2O that are all collected together forming one large body of water, a body united that flows together. Water has this interesting way of teaching us how to let go, to be submerged below the surface, trusting that we too will rise once again. John the Baptist gathers people down into the water, just like the Hebrew people gathered together and crossed the waters of the Red Sea. They had left Egypt, they had left their old life, and were on the move to a new life, a promised land. But the space in between was the wilderness. It was there in the wilderness that they prepared their hearts for the promised land. They prepared a way for peace, peace for their lives tomorrow. So how do we prepare a new way of peace? Well, we begin in the waters of repentance. Now, repentance is not simply speaking aloud our sins and then getting our ticket to heaven. No, repentance is turning from one way, from one direction, to a new way, to a new direction. Hmm. Repentance is like washing off the old in order to prepare for the new. This week, I invite you to practically practice repentance. Repentance with water. I invite you to maybe take a hot shower or a hot bath. Maybe you can just run your hands underneath a faucet of hot water. Or if you really want to get meditative, you can drink a glass of hot tea that's been seeped in hot water. Whatever you do, do it slowly. Perhaps even close your eyes and feel the warmth washing over your being. Hmm. However you choose to experience this type of meditative repentance, I invite you in that moment to lift your spirit, to unite your soul in a prayerful way to not only the Creator or the Christ or the Holy Ghost, but also to your brother or sister. I invite you to use the water as a way to prepare your heart for a new way. And I wonder if in the midst of preparing, just like John the Baptist did in the wilderness, just like we are trying to do in this wilderness season, I wonder if you too might experience peace, a collective peace peace that lights up our own souls in the darkest of nights, a peace that unites us to people we love near and far, a peace that reminds us that we are not alone, a peace that will even ease our anxious thoughts, our racing hearts. Today, I invite you to find peace with me and with one another. Let us experience collective peace together. Amen.